It was a Monday afternoon. The sun was out. It was beautiful. And it was the first day that the cross-country team had come back, back to school, back to the team. Most of the students were alumni. Sure, there were a few freshmen there. And there was a cross-country coach. And his first question to them was the same question he'd been asking students on the first day for years. How many of you ran this summer? Everybody's hands went up. How many of you ran at least 10 miles a week this summer? Everybody's hands stayed up. But you could tell as they were looking at each other, they were kind of watching whose hands were still up and whose were going to go down. As if they wanted to know who was going to tell the truth and when. Because most of these students hadn't run all summer. Oh, they'd run here or there. They were remembering just the previous week. But he hadn't asked about the previous week. He'd asked about the summer. And it's one of those things when you realize that uh, you can't cheat or lie about a workout that you haven't done. Not when you're running cross country. Because you either have done the work and a coach will notice it right away or you haven't and he'll notice it right away. This particular coach sent them on a run. It's a three or four mile run around the high school, up into the hills, come back around. And he got in his car and he drove part of the way to see where they were at. And he was, he had his stopwatch out and he was just clocking a particular point in the run. And they were running slow. They were running so slow that he knew with certainty they hadn't done it. And so he sat them down at the end of the run, pulled them all back together, sat them down in a huddle and explained, everybody has the same 24 hours in a day. Time moves at the same pace for everyone. What you do with it is what's important. You can't say I didn't have time because everybody had the exact same time. What you can say is, I chose differently. I chose to do something else with my time. And most of those cross-country students realized they'd made a whole series of choices all summer. Choices that didn't include getting some practice in and running and getting prepped for the next year and the next team and the next season. Well, as you can imagine, the first few weeks of cross-country practice were particularly grueling. I know, my brother was on one of those teams, and he would come home, and he'd just fall flat on the floor or land on the bed and wouldn't move for hours because the coach was working them because of all the work they hadn't done over the summer. What does this have to do with blogging and making time to blog every day? Well, you already know. You and I and everybody else has exactly the same amount of time every day. And most of us have a job, and so we work every day. And, and many of us have families, and so we have meals and evening routines with people every day. And yet, we still make choices. So to the person who says, well, I don't have time to write, I don't have time to blog, I don't have time to sit down and think through stuff, it's not really that. You can't say, I don't have time. What you can say is, I made other choices. I made other decisions to spend my time in a different way. And maybe those decisions are great. Maybe those decisions are awesome. There is no trick. There is no secret. There is no mystery. There is no magic bullet. Nothing will suddenly make you a writer. You know how you become a better writer? By writing. You know how you find the time to blog? By blogging. You carve off the time. Now, I can give you a couple tips, some things that help. And it's the same same thing that happens when you're talking about practicing anything, like cross-country running. Do it at the same time every day. When you do it at the same time every day, a couple things happen. First, you stop asking the question, will I? Because it's no longer an option. You've decided you're going to. So you don't have to go, oh, it's uh, it's 5 o'clock or it's 2 o'clock or it's 9 o'clock at night. Am I going to do this or am I going to write or am I going to run? No, you're like, this is what I do. So you remove the question from the scenario by creating a habit. The second thing is, if you attach it to a habit, if you attach it to an existing habit, it's likelier to take in a stronger way. 
So if you were a runner every morning and you went running, you wake up, put on your shoes, lace them up, go out for a run. When you come home, what do you normally do? Well, if you're like most people, you take a shower. It's a habit that's connected to another habit. I run, then I take a shower. And what if you put something in between the two? I run, I write a post, I take a shower. Or what if you put it after? I run, I shower, I write a post. Because you're already doing some of those habits, because you're already programmed and your life is programmed to do it, attaching in a new habit is a lot easier when it's connected to something else. If you just say, well, I'm going to write today and you have no idea when you're going to do it, it's like saying I'm going to run today and having no idea when you're going to do it. The second dynamic is when you go running, right, you got to put on different shoes. I have dress shoes, but if you sent me out running, well, let's be clear. If you sent me out running in general, you and I are going to have words. But if you sent me out running in my dress shoes, it's going to be horrible. You have to put on a different set of shoes to go running. The same thing is true when I sit down to write. Whether I'm using the native WordPress backend or whether I'm using a, an app like the desktop uh, product that I, I'm going to type in, either way, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find one tool, find one approach, and I'm going to use it over and over and over. I'm going to prep myself and prepare, and on my screen, I'm going to remove the distractions. I'm going to use the tools I need to get my work done. And you ought to have tools for yourself as well. Whether that's on your phone or whether that's on your laptop or whether that's at your desktop, have the tools you need and get yourself situated so that when you hit that routine and you come to that stop, and you're like, okay, what tools do I need? Now, if you are writing a post that's going to reference another article, right? I Often I'll write posts that are uh, driven by another article. I, I have Evernote open. When I blog, I pull up my Evernote because I have all the different articles that I found that were interesting, all the stuff I read. I have it all right there. So I have Evernote open. I also use Pretty Link Pro for my affiliate stuff. So I have a second window that has all my affiliate links there in case I need to use one, right? These are the tools, just like if you were a runner, you'd lace up running shoes. So the second thing is make sure you have your tools prepped and ready. If you have a habit and you have your tools prepped, boy, it's going to make things a lot easier. But the third thing is you're going to get to this point, and this is why I never ran cross country. Because when you run... And that's why I never ran track either, in case you're wondering. When you run the same routes all the time, whether it's in track, running in that little circle, or running cross country where you run the same loop around the high school every time, you get bored. You get stuck. You're like, this is horrible. Well, it's the way it happens when you write blog posts too. You're like, what am I going to write about? I have no idea what I'm going to write about. And it's easy to get bored. Bored of your own blog. Bored of your own writing. Bored of your own voice. The only way you're going to get through that is if you change it up a little bit. It's why I have several different topics that I move through and why I created an editorial calendar. The editorial calendar will tell me, okay, today you're writing about this. Okay, today you're writing about this. Now, I may still adjust it, right, if some new thing pops up that I'm like, I want to write about. But the editorial calendar gives me new routing, new runs to route, right? So new routes to run. It gives me an opportunity to go somewhere different, to try something different, and that keeps it interesting. I know some people say, oh, I just, you know, every blog, every blog site is around one and only one topic. I'd have seven blogs and I'd be bored of them all, right? I, I can't live that way. So I have one accumulated blog. Now, the, the topics are very similar and close to one another, so it helps. But at the end of the day, I'm not doing that for you. I'm doing it for me to keep me engaged, to keep me energetic, right? So those are my tips to help you get more regular and more focused at blogging. But at the end of the day, it's still a choice you have to make because it all starts with that time and we all have the same amount of it. It's what choices we make and how to use it and spend it. Good luck.